Well, welcome to episode 111 today, folks. Remember, hit the like button or I'm going to die right now. Death is coming to me. Is it still considered progression if I reach the end of my rep range on the first set of an exercise, but the next time that I do it, I do more reps on the following sets? I mean, technically, that's still progression, yes, but rather than playing games like this and wondering if you're doing better on subsequent sets because you have less fatigue versus actually getting stronger, I would recommend that you just do dynamic double progression, meaning that you track each set individually, and if one set reaches the end of the rep range, use a higher weight on that set. Why do you only do a triceps compound and not a triceps isolation in your full body split? Well, for one, this question implies that you need to be doing a tricep isolation. But what's really the difference between a tricep isolation and a tricep compound? If the exercises are chosen correctly, all that really matters is the SFR, which exercise trains your triceps better for the stimulus to fatigue that you get, right? With the type of full body split that I'm doing, which is like a beginner full body split where you repeat exercises, I just don't have room for eight different isolations on top of compounds. What do you think is going to happen at the Texas Pro? So this is a hard, an easy question disguised as a hard question if you've been paying attention to people's updates. Uh, the last update that Carlos put out, he looks so out of shape that I'll be surprised if he finishes in the top three. I'm not trying to be mean, it's, it, he just looks really out of shape. He's, he's not there. The latest updates from Hunter are the best he's ever looked, the best his waist has ever been, the best his back has ever been. He is the most shredded he has ever been. Andrew, on the other hand, has never once been in shape. When he won his pro card, it looked like he didn't even try, right? I have Hunter winning easily. Does excess training volume cause one to look bigger through extra glycogen, water retention, etc.? Yes, it does, but the primary mechanism that it does that by is actually inflammation. So it, it inflames the cells, causes intracellular water retention, and as soon as you stop doing that excess training, the inflammation goes away and the water drops off. When you do your first bodybuilding show, do you plan to coach yourself? No, I do not. I will almost certainly enlist help for that because even though I know how to diet and all of that, I've never done the peaking process before and having someone there to guide me will be helpful. Can removing free weight compounds lead to dysfunction and imbalances? No, absolutely not. There's zero evidence to support this whatsoever. In fact, we now have direct research showing no difference between machines and free weights in terms of how it impacts functionality. Now, what can happen, especially with bigger bodybuilders who are enhanced, is that they slowly start moving away from every movement that causes them pain or irritation, rather than working on mobility or trying to figure out why that's happening. And eventually they have almost no movements left that are pain-free, and they're forced to sort of start figuring out the dis dysfunction, quote unquote. What is the point of Mike Menzer's style isometric holds in the shortened position, as well as eccentric only training? So isometric, concentric, and eccentric contractions all likely contribute to hypertrophy through different mechanisms and or hypertrophy different fibers. Uh, the point of it then is because you're doing so little volume is to completely exhaust every avenue of hypertrophy in a single set or in two sets. Of course, the main issue with it, according to modern science at this point, is that most of it has a horrible stimulus to fatigue ratio. Does it make sense to transition to a machine due to stability when losing weight? No, it doesn't. Now, please understand there's context involved here. When, when I hear someone is losing weight, I think of basically a recreational trainee that's like a male going from 18% to 13% to get some abs for summer. And the stability loss from that is not going to be significant enough that you need to move away from free weights because the SFR is going to get so poor. On the other hand, if you are a bodybuilder who's getting contest ready and you're starting to get under 10%, your ability to generate internal stability will be significantly less to the point where at the end of the cut, machines will give a better stimulus. What is the best dunk of all time in your opinion, both in the NBA and separately? So I gotta be honest, even though I love basketball, I consider like dunking a separate thing and I don't give a shit about dunking personally so i'm just like the wrong person to ask this question 
I just finished up a cut. How do I transition to a bulk? Do I need to do a maintenance phase? I mean, you can just go straight into the bulk, my man. Um, if you're feeling beat up and tired and low energy from your cut, you can consider taking, you know, like a, a one week deload at maintenance and then like a one week intro into your bulking phase to make sure that you're going into your bulk nice and fresh. But if you're not beat up, I mean, you can pretty much just go straight into a bulk. You don't need a maintenance phase. Alrighty, folks, that is the end of today's Q&A. Thank you for tuning in to episode 111. So if you like the Q&As, please remember to like the video when it comes out on YouTube so that we can break the mother effing algorithm for once. Um, if you'd like to become a more substantial supporter of the Q&A, you can join up on Patreon for $1 a month. If you'd like to work with me directly for coaching, look for my email in the description box on YouTube or just shoot me a DM on Instagram for a fastest reply. If you'd like to check out my older ebooks, go ahead and look at my bio. There's a link in there on Instagram or check the description box on YouTube for a link there as well. So I will be back on, let's see, Saturday. And I'm a little bit undecided as to whether or not I will sort of deload my lower body a little bit and just do like a session of leg curls and leg extensions to go for a bigger squat on Monday. Not sure yet. I may just squat again anyway. We'll see.